name is uh, Daryl Joseph Montana. My tribe, because it's always be my tribe, is the Yellow Pocahontas. And I look at between, you know, my father and I, you know, my daddy did 52 years and I did 48 years, so what is that? That's 100 years, <laughs> just between me and him. And I never would have thought that 48 years later I would still be doing it, but when you get involved in it, you know, it's a serious piece of business. And, you know, anybody who dress, I respect what they do because I know what it take. But nobody can make this stuff by themselves. Anybody tell you they could do it. Now, when I was doing it like this, I could do it. But when you step up into another category, you need help. And, um, and but then when you're doing this here, you, you, you're struggling because you're paying bills. You got to live. You got to do So you got to kind of, you kind of got to kind of Center your life around this and then everything else come after. You make sure you get the money for the suit. If you're serious about it. Um, my daddy was one, he didn't take no excuses. Why you couldn't? One year, uh, me and a little guy got into it. I didn't dress. And uh, me and the guy got into it. It was about to be a big old thing. And he said, he, he, he took up for the little guy. He said, you come here disrupting my, my game. Mr. Guy wasn't dressed, but he was a helper. And uh, he said, you don't even have a suit on. He said, you need to have some feathers in your head. So I knew, I knew then, I, I got I to gotta get myself together. So, you know, uh, I, I had some, some difficulties in my, my, my earlier life. Mm -hmm. I went to prison. Mm -hmm. um, I was gone for three years. I come back home. And while I was gone, I sang any of your songs for three years in the field. I must have had a tribe of about 300. So I was like, wow. and, and if it had not been for this, I don't know what, where I would have, my mind frame would have been when I was incarcerated because I've seen when it was trying to drive me, sending me to go cut grass and water. I'm standing in the water with a great, trying to, you know, but they was mentally messing with me. Mm -hmm. But I realized, I said, you know what? The longer I stay here, the stronger I'll be. I'll be strong as King Kong and I have not stopped. It's all because I... I had this to fall back on. Before Katrina, y'all routes haven't changed after Katrina. My route has always been the same route my daddy took. I've never changed anything. I never changed the songs, the same songs my daddy sang. Um, just like like now they, they you know he was a, he was very a stickler for people making sure people sing Indian Red right. And uh, one guy was changing the song, and he said. You don't change that song. He said, you want to change something? Change that suit. Quit wearing that old suit. <laughs> so he was, he would, what came up, came out. And that's what I liked about him. He had a word, and I tried to mimic myself exactly like he was, you know. This was the first suit I made um, with my daddy not being there, because my daddy died two months before Katrina. So this was the first suit I did, and I did it in honor of him. In fact, this is a replica of my daddy in his last suit coming out of my suit. I got when the arms moved and everything. You know, so when I walked the street, it looked like he was walking the street. Fire you on the mouth, dragons in the grass. Lord have mercy, let my people pay. I traced my mom my hands. I saw hands and this inside the dream catcher. So I dedicated this suit to my mom. So for years and years, my mama really was the driving force that kept this culture thing going in our area because they were trying to get my dad. What he go the crown or the golden crown? My big cheek. So when you say you're going to be cheap, it's like a, a eight-cylinder car. All pistons got to be hit. No, you're going to have a miss. It's going to be running sluggish. So I believe, and it's just me, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I, my daddy was hard on me when it came to doing this. You know, when I put my suit on now, I know there's health issues. I, you know, it's hard when you make this stuff and then you gotta wear it. 
And sometimes I've seen guys say they're not going to do it because they didn't have the money to get the feathers. Well, you know, so everybody got different stories, but my story is I've been fortunate enough for 48 years. I've been on a mission. My mission is, is economic development within our culture. I know I've taught over 3,000 kids. Also, I've taught some senior citizens as well how to make the dough. The senior citizens are on a fixed income. Make the dolls. They'll be able to supplement that check they get once a month to help them with their, 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 their medication bills or whatever. Um, the young kids. If I don't get the kids, you know who's going to wind up getting them? The dope dealers. Don't get no support. I've done one thing with the Tourist Commission. They took a streetcar and put it on an 18-wheeler truck and drove it to Chicago outside of the Intercontinental Hotel. It maybe was about maybe about seven of us that went on a trip by way of the young lady Tony Wright. She's no longer there, and um, you know I was able to make make money by that way. But they basically they were using us to let the world know that New Orleans is not still under wall. So that's why we did that. But as far as anything else, haven't really gotten any kind of play. I'm, I've been teaching at Xavier. I think this should be about my 24th year, teaching kids how to do this. And um, the money that I made for the summer camp paid for the suit. So I didn't have to be trying to figure that one out. Um, but in my traveling, I've got a chance to go to other places and everybody's trying to get here. And I, I was telling somebody not long ago, uh, but Indian is key and everything else come after that. You know, it's like to not have us, this is how serious it is. To not have us is like gumbo without the seasoning. The lessons that I've learned is that it's not, it's not a me, it's we, and it's us. Because for me to do this and not have people, the masses out there waiting for me to come out, I mean, from sun up to sun down, if it take that long. To be in the presence of folks and then just telling you how much they love you. You know, um, just so, so much love. And even even some of the people that was my rival we were this year, because they knew it was my last year and they didn't dress. And I had one young man to come up to me and say, Chief, can I take a picture with you? Now, he's a chief, too. And for years and years, I kind of had a bad taste in my mouth because the way how he dealt with me, you know what I'm saying? But this is a competitive sport. And um, for him to come up and ask me, can he take a picture? I said, oh, of course, come on. You know, and then he tell me, he said, man, I love you. Wow. And I, I posted some stuff that, that I'm not in competition with anybody. Um, I just do what I do. I teach a lot, you know, I try to teach by passing it on, you know, and I'm just hoping that that what my daddy has gone through, what I've gone through thus far, that the tribe will continue. And, and Indian is a beautiful thing, but in it there's some ugliness in it, you know, because everybody won't try to be the one, but I feel... You know, and I think I do pretty good, but I feel like it was only one, and it was two in Montana.